previously. Going into 5Ds, I mean, our decks are only going to get even crazier on Progression Series Season 2. Oh my god! My god. The best god. player yeah. in the game! Oh. Let's go! That's so sad. Oh my god! <laughs> Decided not to run back the Gladiator Beast today? In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs for one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing Introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Gentlemen, welcome to the Synchro Era. With the new era for the Progression Series comes a new judgment, and we have some changes that Gage and I want to modify, and I think you, the viewers at home, will appreciate these as well. Gage, you want to go ahead and start us off? Oh, yes. Between two players, you know, looking at each other's hands seems a little bit unfair, and it's been unfair since the very start of DM. As you can see, <laughs> most cards with that effect are removed from the game. So we decided to follow suit, and with the last few episodes, we really got frustrated over cards like Trap Does Shoot, as well as confiscation. We were both taking those cards and putting them usually to zero. Thank goodness. What do you yeah, think about I'm, that? I it's... think after the episode where I comfy dude and dust shooted you uh, in like the same turn after like- It was just of... last episode. Yeah, yeah. Was it just last episode? God, <laughs> yeah, my timeline's just last so episode. warped. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, I think that was the nail in the coffin for those cards. Those cards have been banned for a while and I think people now understand the reason for that. Speaking of which, we also decided to ban another collectively powerful card that we both have access to and that is Crush Card. Now, Crush Card has been a bit of a blowout so far in the series, although we only got it a couple episodes back, but it's just going to sort of limit our deck building moving forward in so many different ways, and so we just decided that to pre prevent this from just being an absolute disaster of a card, we're just going to get rid of this card now, but honestly, that's it. There's a bunch of other power cards we decided to keep because they make the show entertaining, and uh, we also have one last thing too, Gage. Yeah, with the new last thing, as we move into a new era like we did with GX, we are giving ourselves three fresh new redo or tickets moving into this era of Yu-Gi-Oh! And let me tell you, 5D's era with all these reprint packs, this is going to be a very hard decision to when to use these yeah. tickets. I know you're going to be very grateful to have those redoer tickets since you were oh at my gosh, zero yeah. going into this episode. I think <laughs> I had like three or four or something. I haven't really been using mine all that much. I think I'm saving them for these reprint sets coming up because they're just going to be crazy. But we know you guys are excited for today's episode, so let's go ahead and get on into it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Duelist Genesis is here and and so are Synchros. This is going to be an electrifying episode. There's going to be a lot of shit that we have to get through. But first, we have to spin the wheel for winning the last episode of the GX era. We also have three wild cards that we can get here as well. And so let's see what we are going to get for today to kick things off. Come on, be something good, be something good, be something good, be something good. Oh, we just went through a judgment and I get to ban something? Oh my God. Now, to be fair, I don't get to do this until the end of the episode, but if Gage gets some of those good synchros, he is going to be in for an absolute miserable time. Speaking of which, let's throw it on over to him so he can tell you all about today's set, the Duelist Genesis. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to rev it up. Today, we are hopping into the 5Ds era in Yu-Gi-Oh, one of my favorite eras of all time. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series continues to move forward into the era of Synchro Monsters, and we are debuting with quite possibly one of the most powerful sets printed at the time, that is Duelist Genesis. Sometimes new mechanics get off to a rocky start with 
some very mediocre monsters. The Duelist Genesis did not do that. Right out the gate, we got some of the most powerful synchro monsters of all time in its very first debut set. In today's episode, we get to revisit that nostalgia of first seeing the debut of Mechanic. Hopefully, we get to play with some of these new synchro monsters today and experience the power of the new Mechanic as it came out. As per usual, let's go over some cards you'll see in the Duelist Genesis and what we'll be looking for personally for our own collection. The secret rares of the Duelist Genesis, besides maybe two of them, are nothing too stellar. Hand of the Six Samurai and Charge of the Light Brigade are the two super powerful secret rare slotted cards that we're going to be adding to our collection. I really want to Charge of the Light Brigade. This was a TCG exclusive back in the day and single-handedly made Light Swarm one of the best archetypes. Literally does everything you could possibly want for the archetype. It sends three off the top of the deck and adds any Light Swarm monster from deck to hand. Quite the powerful spell card. Super rares, we're going to be eyeing up a few of them. I definitely might want a copy of Kinka Bio. Maybe we can mix it with something like the Mystic Piper later on down the line. Magical Android is a great level 5 synchro, one of the only generic level 5 synchros we had back in the day. And I actually want Gladiator Beast War Chariot to soup up our Gladiator Beast strategy a little bit more with this release. We get a couple more Gladiator Beast cards down the line here, but this is one of the most powerful ones. A counter trap card that negates a monster effect and destroys it if we have a Gladiator Beast monster. Quite powerful. Kunai with Chain is also a deceptively good battle trap that I'd like to get my hands on. The rares have some pretty good cards. Mind Master is able to facilitate some FTKs. Neither of us got the opportunity to play with it in Season 1 of the Progression Series. Herald of Orange Light has come up recently as one of the best hand traps with uh, Tier Elements. And then the Tricky in the early days of the Synchro, a level 5 that you could summon just pretty much for free was pretty good back in the day. I want to definitely pick up at least a copy or two of the Tricky. I already said the Ultras and the Bangers, and you can just tell by looking at it. Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Goyo Guardian, Thought Roller Archfiend, Emergency Teleport. I literally want all of these cards. They're so strong. Goyo Guardian was a staple last season. I definitely want to get another copy of it this season because of how powerful it is in the early Synchro era. Stardust Dragon is kind of in the same vein too. I'd love to pull a copy of this. And as for commons, you got a few of them that matter. Cards like Krebon, Psychic Commander. These are E-Tele targets that back in the day were able to make the Emergency Teleport at 3 as good as it was. Krebon's being a level 2 pairs with any level 4 to make Goyo Guardian, which back in the day was insane on its own. Psychic Commander being a level 3 compared with 5s to make level 8s, which isn't too bad either. I want a couple copies of Gladiator Beast of Quest. Glad this card's only a common. It is a wing beast that when it's special summoned by Gladiator Beast, adds a Gladiator Beast card from Graveyard to Hand. One of the better ones. There's some odds and ends that are pretty good here. Uh, Book of Eclipse is something nice to have for later. It actually ends up being a pretty good tech card in some side decks. Recycling batteries is very good for battery men if we want to visit those later on down the line. And even some stuff for uh, more light swarms like Needlebug Nest. If we can get a couple copies of those, this might be just milling five, the best option of mill we have. Duelist Genesis was a groundbreaking set and released some of the best synchro monsters in the game actually on release too. It was a really impressive set on release. I'm excited to re-experience the release of one of my favorite mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh! But first we gotta open our pity packs. We are now leaving Champion Pack 6 behind so we have no more chances at Stratos. Doesn't matter to me, I already got them. But we are moving on to Champion Pack 7, which unfortunately I think Champion Pack 7 is one of the worst ones. Three packs of CP7, let me see what I get. Flip them up. Yeah, Fuse Lord Dragon. The Shovel Crusher is so powerful. Number two, Lone Fire and Super Rare. I got a couple copies of these myself. Absolutely gorgeous. I think I got one in Phantom Darkness uh, as a rare, which was monumental because I'd never got one in the Progression Series before anyways. This is the second copy, which isn't too bad. I had a whole video on Champion Pack actually that I released recently on my channel. If you guys want to go check that out, you might be able to learn something about why some of these cards are so expensive, like $570. Not an accurate pricing, but it's pretty close to how much you'll be able to find these Lone Fires for on market. On to pack number three, anything big? No, the Truesdale. I did not expect to get anything too big from Champion Pack 7. Like I said, it's one of the worst ones. There's some cool reprints in it for higher upgrade rarities, but nothing like in a higher rarity getting a lower rarity reprint. On to what we all want to see today, though. The Duelist Genesis, man. I love this set, bro. It's always the green sets. The green sets are always the one with monumental releases behind them. Let's just look at these, bro. Duelist Genesis, Return of the Duelist, Code of the Duelist, Rise of the Duelist. All green sets, game warping. 24 packs of the Duelist Genesis, ladies and gentlemen. I accidentally already opened pack number one, and we're starting off with an ultimate rare in Psychic Overload. Not a terrible card if we have a pretty heavy emphasis on Psychics, but some other decent cards cards in here include Dr. Cranium, Psy Station, Psychic Snail. Mind Over Matter is not a terrible rare either. Book of Eclipse is a very powerful card as well, maybe not necessarily at this exact moment, but even in future episodes, this card actually saw tons of play in Season 1. We have Quillbolt Hedgehog, and we have the Selection, a very interesting 
interesting counter trap that could also see play. I think one of my favorite things about the Duelist Genesis is like how many playable cards this set actually has. I mean, this set has overworked as well, telekinetic charging cell. I mean, good thing Cyberstein's no longer in the format because I think if we could pull off some weird combo with that, that would be really funny. Although I don't think we're at the point we can do that because they didn't start doing that till Link Monsters were out. I think this is our third copy of the selection though. So we basically have like, three Solemn Judgment-esque type cards. I mean, maybe we can consider playing this. I really want some Gladiator Beast cards. I want some Synchro Monsters. Do I get them? Nothing in the first pack, but it's the first pack. It's all right. Super Rare, off the bat with the Broken Blocker. I gotta be honest, I don't know what this card does. Pretty sure it's bulk. Wow, that card is like actually pretty bad, especially in sealed when I can't guarantee that I have three copies of the same card. Another super rare with twin barrel dragon, not the one I want to be seeing. I want to see in the super rare spot, specifically Gladiator Beast War Chariot. That's the one super I really want to grab. Still no quest in the common slot four packs in. Not too worried about it though. And a secret rare, not the secret rare we wanted, because of course we would have liked to have uh, a good secret rare, preferably in the synchro category, but Splendid Venus. Sadly not going to play this. We did get a Krebons though. It's pretty sad when you're more excited about the common than the secret rare. Oh, and our first synchro of the episode, Mr. Thought Ruler Archfiend. This is a big one. This card is quite good. I mean, Stardust Dragon and Goya are obviously far and away better, but Thought Ruler's maybe like in third place. This thing is a house. It's actually very difficult to deal with, and the life gain effect can be quite relevant. We definitely play this for sure, but a Mind Master as well may not be the most relevant at this moment. We definitely could see this in the future, though. Flipping up the halfway point here, what do I get? Nothing good still. I, I need to point out that I've gotten zero Gladiator Beast a quest still, and it's a common. I'm actually kind of like stunned. That's really bad. There's the first one. Oh my god, I was wondering if it was hold out on me. There's still no good hollows pulled at all though, but that's the first Gladiator Beast a quest. If I can pull at least three of this, it's a decent Duelist Genesis opening. But a decent Duelist Genesis opening, I don't think we'll cut it. Mind Master. That's the one I was just talking about, how there's some sick FTKs with Mind Master. This is the first time I think it's debuted in the progression series. Uh, nothing too crazy at the moment we can do with Mind Master. Later down in the line when more psychic monsters get released to the game there, lots of stuff comes up. But I'm 18 packs in, still only one a quest deep and no really good relevant hollows. Ooh, yikes. Second a quest and an orange light to add to the mix there. All right. It could be worse, I guess. We're about halfway through. Haven't had anything too good since the Thought Ruler Archfiend. I think I'm really looking for a Stardust or a Goyo Guardian at this point. Either one will do. I think Goyo's probably better, but I mean, honestly, both are pretty good. And uh, haven't seen them yet. I think this wraps up our playset of Krebons and our playset of Psychic Commander, but these are common, so that's expected. Super Rare Nitro Synchron. Uh, neat little card, but we don't have the Nitro Warrior, so it's not going to do much good unless we pull that. Another Super Rare, Kunai with Chain. I think we're probably past the point of this card being good. This would have been good maybe in like Magic Ruler format, but yeah, it's a nice nostalgic card. And another Secret Rare, Ice Master. Oh my God. Again, could have been like a Stardust Dragon or like any good card, I guess, besides Splendid Venus, but it is what it is. Uh, only four packs left. Our only like big hit so far has been Thought Ruler. And I'm considering re-rolling because yeah, we lose Thought Ruler, but we could get way more out of this set if we get really lucky. Yeah, go figure. That'd be an ultra rare I get is Montage Dragon. <laughs> out of all the good ultra rares in the set, all the synchro monsters, emergency teleport, I get Montage Dragon. Go figure. Four packs left. Anything to redeem this set here? A super rare again, and it's Counselor Lily. A Man, I am extremely unlucky with this first opening of Dolce Genesis. I can probably already tell you I'm going to re-roll this set after I open this last pack, unless it is something absolutely bonkers which it's not, it's desynchro. There's no shot that I keep this Duelist Genesis opening. Like I said, it's a decent opening. We got our two quest, which was, I guess, I was looking just for a quest, but a decent Duelist Genesis opening is not good enough. With three fresh redoer tickets at our disposal, I think using one at the very start of the 5Ds era to ensure that we can get some of these most powerful synchro monsters is definitely going to be good. I'm going to spend one of my redoer tickets. Let's get cracking again. All right, and only a few packs left of the Duelist Genesis. Can we get anything big in the close? Didn't look Look like it in that third to last pack. How about the second to last? Another super rare in Broken Blocker. Unfortunately, that's one of the less good super rares in the set. Final pack. Can we end on a Goyo or a Stardust? No, but we can end on a ultimate rare Nitro Warrior. Uh, this gives me, you know, plenty of nostalgia for the sealed showdown where it was the Nitro Warrior anime battle. Uh, if you haven't watched that, I'd recommend it. So we pulled Thought Ruler plus Nitro Warrior, which let's be honest, Nitro Warrior isn't really that good. Thought Ruler is definitely where it's at. 
I do have a lot of re redoer tickets, so I have the opportunity to respin this, and I'm considering as to whether or not I want to do that. Yeah, fuck it. I think we can do better. Let's go ahead and pull up 24 more packs. We're going again, ladies and gentlemen. Hoping for a lot better luck this time around. I'm talking like season one type luck I need again. The first pack with the tricky is already a better sight too. That's one rare I didn't steal the first time around. Oh, oh, the war chariot. I, I almost just missed it. I got the war chariot. That is so good. Now I just need a quest to pair with it and I got everything I possibly could have asked for in the Dolish Genesis. That's a really big pull for the Gladiator Beast deck. Alex is getting into the arena today. Speaking of a quest, there he is popping up. Could not have asked for a better reroll. This has been very favorable so far. Oh, ultra rare. Uh, psychic overload again on the bottom side of the ultras. There's so many better ones that we could get, but another tricky. It's okay to add to the bank. Super rare. Man, uh, the hollows back to back. Power filter is painfully okay. It's painfully okay. Seed some really fringe side deck play in certain metas, but I don't think it's going to be anything we'll see here in the progression series. All right, 24 more packs. Now, this does have the potential to backfire, right? I did give up a Thought Ruler Art Train, but honestly, there's so many better hits. Like, we didn't even get like a magical android, right? We could get Goyo Guardian. We could get Stardust Dragon. We could get Red Dragon Art Train. Like, Thought Ruler's good, but I think we can do a lot better than that. And we are, oh my God, and first pack, Red Dragon Art Train Ultimate Rare. I honestly think just just from that alone, we're already way ahead because this is pack number one. Never punished, never ever punished for our decisions. And there's a Krebon, so I feel good that we at least have one of these. Super rare twin barrel dragon. This is like the miniature blowback dragon slash barrel dragon. Not very good, but uh, it's a nice throwback. Also telepathic powers like Sakuretsu armor for psychics. What is it with my secret rare luck? I'm getting like every secret rare besides like the ones that really matter. Uh, Cyber shark, ladies and gentlemen. I think the selection is way better than this card and sadly, this could have been something much better. Ultra rare, very upset to see this because this could have been Goyo or Thought Ruler again. Multiple piece golem, holy shit, that's a brick. Oh, second a quest coming in. We've already matched the very first pull we got and I think did better is an Ami as a rare. Still no crazy hollows yet. We got uh, the super rare earlier and the ultra rare, but none of the good ones close. It's a secret rare. It's one of the better ones, like I said. Hand, as well as Charge of Light Brigade are the two best secrets in this set. So Hand of the Six Samurai is not terrible. It does get a reprint in a special edition later on down the line, but even when we do open that, we don't get the opportunity to get that in its reprint. So, I mean, if we play Six Samurai down the line, might be able to build something off of that. I know Hand is quite useful for those decks. At least I'm pretty sure. So, I, I'll take it. You know it's a secret. I didn't get one last time. Another super rare, Power Filter. Uh, interesting little card. I don't think this will be super useful right now, but if Gage is playing a deck where this could be a Floodgate, something to consider. Also, the tricky is not bad because of synchros and i think this wraps up our kreb on play set okay we got the mind master back so that's pretty good if we want to use that later on as well so i will take it really we got the ice master again two secret rares in both 24 packs come on we need the synchros we started so hot with the red dragon arch fiend we gotta get at least one good one or i should say one more good synchro Okay, Magical Android, thank you. I'll take it. At least that's like a playable synchro that's actually decent. It's not Stardust or Goyo, but it's a super. So for the super slot, this is maybe as good as it gets. Now, if we can just get a Goyo Guardian, we'll be all set. And sadly, that was not it. Oh, King Kabiu. Uh, King Kabiu is like pretty good, like I said, with Mystic Piper and stuff like that, if we were to build some really fringe deck lists with it. But um, again, as far as super rares, there's, there's better stuff I could be looking at, honestly. Coming up on the last few packs here, still none of the most powerful synchro monsters in the game. I'm rocking with zero white cards in my extra deck. It looks like that might be what I'm doing with. Oh my god. All right. Last pack. Can we get any magic? The last time we opened Duelist Genesis, I pulled an emergency teleport in the very last pack. Can I match that type of energy? I cannot. Wow. Both of these openings, bro. Not even close to season one. The second go around, though, with the War Chariot and the Triple Quest is the one I am going to have to stick to the collection. I don't think it's bad. I think we do have something really good in the works here. Let's see what we can build. Second copy of Power Filter. Again, if this becomes relevant, having two copies of that could be pretty devastating. Alrighty, only three packs left. We have Red Dragon Archfiend plus a Magical Android. I would like to get one more Synchro. I'd like Goyo or Stardust preferably, but in three packs, it's not super likely. Three Power Filters, what the fuck? Okay, well, I guess I got those for later. Uh, second to last pack coming in here. Nothing that I don't think we already have. I think that might be our first Maiden of Macabre. I don't think we'd play that anyway. Last pack, come on. Goyo, Stardust. Goyo, Stardust. Goyo, Stardust. Goyo, Stardust. Goyo, Stardust. Goyo, Stardust. 
Mm, that is unfortunate. But I think we, it, it really depends on whether or not you think Red Dragon Archfiend is better than Thought Ruler or not. But we did get Magical Android as well, which is also just a better synchro than Nitro Warrior because it's a lot easier to make. More generic. I think it's going to have more application than something like Nitro Warrior. So I think because of that, this set came out just slightly ahead of the other one. But uh, we'll see. Anything's possible. And uh, I can't wait to get to deck building. We get to change up a lot of stuff for this episode. We are going back to the Colosseum, ladies and gentlemen. The Gladiator Beast are back in the pilot spot. With the addition of a quest as well as our one war chariot we got, we can do some nasty things with this archetype. A quest is definitely one of the better gladiator beasts. 1600 is a body that we didn't really have before. We were having some really small dudes outside of Laquarius and Darius. Uh, so a quest might be able to get in there, but it also has the effect where when it's special summoned by effect of a gladiator beast, I can target a gladiator's card in the graveyard and add it to hand. That can also add back the war chariot too if we used it. On top of that, new addition is Icarus attack because a quest as well as bestiary are wing beasts. Even DD Crow to an extent. So we have a whole bunch of targets to be able to play this extremely powerful trap card, something we wouldn't see a lot of until Blackwing era. Speaking of trap cards, we lined it up with a couple extra of them, Double Compulse, Bottomless, as well as Rod, Torrential Tribute, and then Curse of Anubis is a tech card here where we can change all effect monsters to defense position until the end of the turn, the defense becomes zero. So any of our Gladiator Beasts can topple over any monsters that Alex might have. It allows us to be proactive as well as defensive if we need to like shift everything to defense and maybe start netting some value back on our turn or bring the game back, we can do that with this. As you saw, with the judgment we removed confiscation trap dust shoot as well as crush card virus from our mutual pulls uh pretty happy with those actually i was getting really frustrated with dust shoot as well as confiscation especially last episode when you saw alex drop the combo on me embarrassing so i'm really happy to take those cards out of the meta and just replace them with maybe just better generic trap cards the side deck's a little iffy i'm unsure if it's good but we've got cards like dimensional fissure which are going to be able to pair super well if alex is playing like floaters or saying uh which he's been playing a lot of with his dark deck shadow imprisoning mirror doesn't hurt us in the slightest and it will affect any of Alex's dark plays. He's been playing like dark arm turbo, so that should be able to stop a lot of stuff. Kaiku is also pretty good against chaos, and then Breaker's just generically good normal summon. The only concern I have is if this Gazarus does not last. However, a quest can add back from graveyard to hand, and it can also add back Gazarus from the graveyard to the extra deck. So if anything gets a little hairy, I do think we have ways to keep things in rotation. I really like the way this deck looks. I think it only gets better with the next few sets, especially Crimson Crisis. We get access to Sam Knight, which I think Sam Knight's a really killer gladiator beast that can pair super well with a card like Rescue Cat. All stuff to consider when we're moving forward into the synchro era and especially when i have zero synchro cards at my disposal i'm gonna have to get creative i think this list is good depending on what alex is on might be able to steal us a pretty convincing win let's see what he's playing today so i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty hyped that i got red dragon archfiend as well as magical android but the problem is goyo guardian is so powerful because it's one of the easiest to make because it's a six so any level four plus krebons gets into it very easily and android's a little bit more difficult because it's a five because there aren't many like good threes in the game and then red dragon archfiend is an eight which also is a little bit more difficult to get to because you need to have a six or like a two and a two and a four. So it just requires a little bit more work, but we're going to do our best. As you can tell, our deck is pretty similar to before. We do no longer have confiscation. We no longer have trap dust shoot or crush cards. So we've had to take those cards out, replace them with some others. And we swapped a few things around. So let's do the card by card. We are still playing what I would effectively like to call dark arm control, but now we have synchro. So we have BLS is one of our bombs breaker for back row. Card trooper is one of the threes we have. And it's nice because it can mill stuff, you know, potentially like Disc Commander to be brought back with Limit Rivers. Chaos Orc's another bomb. DD Warrior Lady is just good removal. And Dark Arm Dragon is probably the best bomb in our deck because our deck is primarily dark. Decoitu draws cards. Disc Commander just draws more cards. I moved to Jane into the main deck. I took out Prime Material. And the reason for this is because this is nice because it gets our graveyard filled with darks a lot quicker and also potentially gets Disc Commander into the graveyard or anything that could be revived off of Limit Reverse. But Jane is also just big. And as a result of that, just sort of like holds up well in battle and can stick to the field a little bit easier. So I wanted to try this in the main deck. It also gives us more targets for Rhoda because now we have Warrior Lady, Commander, and Jane. And so we'll see. Yeah, we can mill our bombs, but it's also not a bad thing because then we could pre-mat them back in the case of like Jinzo. So that would be pretty good. We have two Krebons. I can access this like a million different ways. So I have the third in the side, but I think two is probably enough. I don't really see myself synchroing a ton because I don't have Goyo, but it could come up. But speaking of which, Magical Scientist. This is what I really wanted to test out now that we are in the synchro era. So one of the things we could do is that off of the destruction of like a Mystic Tomato, we could summon Scientist or Krebons. Next turn, summon the other, and then we can pay a thousand to summon a six, and then we can easily go into our Red Dragon Archfiend this way. We could also go into a three, and then use the Krebons to go into Magical Android. And depending on the way the rest of our hand looks, if we have some extenders, we could even keep going. It's actually funny that Ojama King is quite relevant here, because Ojama King plus Krebons equals Red Dragon Archfiend. This is a light, this is a dark, banished for BLS. I mean, that's just a ton of damage just out of nowhere. So I want to give Scientist 
scientist to try. There's some cool stuff we can do with him. Let's also not forget Thousand Eyes Restrict. We have the One Faith, the Morphing Jar in case we fall behind. Triple Tomato to search most of our deck. Prometheus to filter the grave so we can make sure Dad is still alive. Sangan, Spirit Reaper, and Snipe Hunter, which I just said in reverse order. Then for the spells, Brain Con, Dark Hole, Fissure. I moved Fissure into the main deck because Krebons is probably going to be in Gage's deck as well. And Krebons is annoying to deal with, like without having removal. So I wanted to have more ways just to kill off a monster just one for one. And this is one of the ways to do that. The low attack also lines up well with this. True Nade and Feather Duster to go for game as well as MST. Pot of Avarice as well as Greed. Premature Burial, Reinforcement of the Army, Smashing Ground, Snatch Shield. And then for the Traps, Double Limit Reverse, Ring of Destruction, and Torrential Tribute. For the side deck, the third Krebons and Prime Material Dragon. I don't think I need this card. I think Jane might just be better because it's a normal summon. But Prime Material Dragon's like an anti-burn and also just like an okay sort of card. Double Book. The rest of my side deck is sort of tailored for if Gage is on like Glads with like Book of Moon, Sack, and Threatening War. Or if he goes Floodgates with Twister as well as Dust Tornado. I have a million cards not to lose to any bullshit he tries to throw our way. So I'm excited to see what Gage pulled. Maybe he's got Goyo and Stardust again like he did last season. God, I hope not. But anything's possible, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Gage, Gage, Gage. The Duelist Genesis is finally upon us. Tell me, buddy, how are you feeling? How many synchros did you pull? If this is anything like season one, I am not looking forward to this. I don't want to spoil too much, man, but man, okay. let me tell you, like a lot of mechanics when they first get released are off to some rocky starts. I think we talked about it last season too, but the Duelist Genesis, does not slack. Some of the I most agree. powerful synchro monsters of all time were released in the debut set. Yep. So it's really cool to be able to see these cards like Unerratted Goyo Guardian, Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Thought Roller Archfiend. All these cards are so cool to be able to see again finally, and they're extremely powerful. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they're not fucking around when they have a 2800 attack Goyo Guardian that can take out anything else in the game, and it's a snatch steal with its... I mean, what the fuck were they thinking? I mean, by yeah. like modern standards, like maybe not as good, but Goyo's nuts. Goyo has been nuts forever and Stardust even still sees play like relatively recently, right? It's just, it's, it's wild to see the start that they gave to this and then kind of just drop the ball on some of the other summoning mechanics. I really think they did Duelist Genesis right, but we can even talk about the other cards in the set too that aren't synchros. There are a lot of power cards in the set. May not be super good right now, but like overworked and all these other different like niche sort of cards, like just a, just a fantastic set overall. We've been really waiting for something like this, but oh, yeah. buddy, let's go ahead and get into it, man. It feels so weird rolling a die after like two months of being away. But go ahead and shout out the patron is Nathaniel Elmore. Thank you for the support. And buddy. Okay. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Ooh. Oh, man. man it's it feels been, it's good. been a couple months since we recorded an episode here, Alex. But but have you changed your thought process at all? I honestly, I don't know. It's and now we have cards like Comfy and Trap Dust Shoot gone. I don't feel like as bad going first now because now you or rather going second because now there's not that fear of getting hit by those cards. So getting the extra card seems pretty good. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to try to go for the extra card. I think going second still the move. All right, the list. Best of luck to you, okay? To you as well, sir. I guess synchros are in play too, so that's something to take into account. Let's yes, see what you sir. got. All right. We'll kick it off strong, man. Look at him cheat. He's yes, smiling. Sir. He's smiling. Pot agreed two more off the top. Not Who needs bad. a draw phase? Who needs it? Oh, let me tell you, holding this six card hand and not having to fear of confidence <laughs> is so good, bro. Let me tell you. I'm like, I don't have to put anything down. I'm good. Um, Let's see here. It must also feel especially good for you too, because I remember you were trying to play around those cards and then that would play into like my true nade or feather duster on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was really rough, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. I think I got an idea here. I'm going to set a monster, set two speller traps, and I'll just pass it to you, bud. Good luck. Man makes me wait like 10 minutes just to set three cards. All right, main one. Anything? Nothing. All right, there's no dust shoot, so I, I don't know what I should be waiting for here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be equally as boring as you, I think. I think I'm just going to set one and throw it over. Oh, okay. I just love the one. I'll take it. I'll draw for my turn. Standby phase, main phase. All right, buddy. Well, let's get it cracking. I'll start by flipping up Gladiator Beast Dimakar. Ooh, on the Glads again. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Got to return to the Coliseum here. Dimakari is one that I didn't play before. When he's tutored out by Glad Beast, he can attack twice each battle phase. He's like, like he's just like middle of the road. He's not yeah. that great, but he's like, okay. Yeah, but let me tell you one that's a little bit above the curve, and he just came out this set. Ooh. Gladiator Beast, a quest. This card is good. A quest is very powerful. Two of these guys, only six 
1600. Let's hope it's a little bit bigger than that face down. I will go to the battle phase and I will declare an attack with, we'll go Dimakari in. Sure, you sure you don't want to overlay with those two level fours? Uh, I, I it is Mystic Tomato. All right, nice. Uh, I'll get over the tomato, no problem. All right, and I think we're going to just go for another tomato. All right, interesting play here is I totally just don't have to attack in this tomato. I can go to the end of the battle phase, put Dimakari back, and Mermillo that. That is true. I'm missing out if I don't attack with this quest. That's the real. You miss out on it being able to tag out. Yes, but I think that's all right. I'm, you know what? I am going to do that play. I think it's the best. I'm going to go to the end of the battle phase. Okay. Okay, I'll put back Dimakari, and then Dimakari, I will put out the Mermillo, and Mermillo will pop the tomato. Tomato's gone. Okay. Main two. I like my board still. If that was the only thing you had for your turn, I feel all right. I'll pass turn to you. All right. We'll draw main one. All right. Let's figure out how we're going to navigate this. Well, it's not great. I'm a bit worried about what you could have in the back row, I'll be honest. I'll try for it, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and run out Krebons. Ooh, the Krebs. Yes, Krebons is fine by me. Okay. I mean, this guy is fine. He can, like, survive, but against Glads, I don't exactly know how good it is. Uh, let's Brain Con here. Let's try to take your Mermilla. Make it a five. Do you have Android? Potentially. Um, Potentially. You can have the Mermilla. That's fine. Okay. And we're going for it. You called correctly, sir. The Android is here. Yeah, Android's fine. Uh, so now is really I decide if I want to attack or not. If I attack, I risk running into any matter of nonsense you have in the back row. If not, if I clear a quest that's pretty good, eh, I'll try for it. Let's see what you got. Battle, what's hidden? Okay, thinking. All right, you put a lot of resources into this, so I feel, yeah, I feel like this is the right play. I am going to ring a destruction the magical android. All right, we'll both take 24. Android's gone, and that's it for me. Nice. All right. Uh, I will draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. Okay. Uh, I will normal summon Gladiator Beast Laquari. It's a good one. Yep. He's all right. Uh, I will go battle phase. I'll take the 34. Yes, sir. And then I will go end of the battle phase. Who are we tagging into? Uh, we're going to tag both of them out. I guess just put dudes on the board, honestly. Like, that's probably just the best move. Put Hapoplamus out here, and I'll bring out Darius as well. Sure. And then Darius, I'll just pull back the Mermillo. Sounds good. Nice. A couple dudes on the board here. Poplimus is boosted up. Hey, I, I mean, I feel pretty okay with this, Alex. I'll just pass it back to you, man. Good I was going to say, it's not looking good for me. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, main one. Need to clear something here. I'm not surviving another turn, really. I only got 1,400 life. I got to run the risk. Uh, let's go Breaker. Yep. Uh, breaker into Darius. <laughs> You're going to feel dumb not using that breaker during the damage step, Alex. Sure. One of the few battle tricks in my deck. I'm going to rush recklessly. Up I there. mean, I couldn't clear Darius if I used the counter yep. gauge. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. uh, so we're going to take, you go to 24 to my 19. So I take five here. Yes, sir. Unfortunate, but I technically use the breaker on your back row anyway. So uh, end of battle phase, uh, yep, anything? End of battle phase. Yep. Darius out. All right, Darius, I'll tag him out for uh, the biggest guy in the deck here. We'll go Laquari back in. Sure. Second main, that's my fifth for Avarice, so... All right, we're not completely we'll out see of if it matters. Yeah, could matter a lot, actually. I've just had... Uh, if you couldn't tell, I'm a little bricked on monsters over here. <laughs> just a few. <laughs> just a few, yeah. Okay, let's hope this helps, and we'll go ahead and draw two. Well, there we go. Uh, I'll set two and pass. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I will draw. Uh, I'll go stand by main. Yep. I guess the only card I have to really worry about is genuinely, like, Torrential Tribute, right? So I'm not going to commit the extra card. I'll put these both to attack. Mirror Force is banned still. So I will go Battle Phase and... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, you got sir. it. I you it. got right. it. You got it. Go to game two. Jeez, that Let's was a go, slaughter. Dude. Gage had to, had, to, had to brush off some of the dust. You know, I've been away for a few months, you know. Uh, not, not Drawing at six monsters the start of the game did not help very much. I oh, think excuses. I think I'm going to go first. Uh, the extra card's really good, but giving you the battle phase is also not the best idea. But I think if I set up a bit, I might be okay. And looking at this hand, I'm already regretting this decision immensely. Um, Gotta be honest, man. I didn't expect you to pick first. I'm, I'm already stunned. I was uh, trying something different, and I'm getting punished severely. I'm passing. Yeah, it. yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, you are. Stay Stand by main. Go for oh it. Oh my god. All right, I will go. I'll start by just summoning Witch of the Black Forest, right? Sure. Beats for 11. Yeah, Beats for 11 is fine. 
Nice. I'll go main two. I'll back it up with one. I'll back it up with two. And then I'll pass it to you. I got to be honest. Even if I went second, I don't even think this hand's that good. <laughs> I'm just going to set one and pass. Go ahead. Oh, my God, bro. You feel it okay. I'm going to drop. I'm doing return. fine. I'm doing fine. Stand by main. We'll get the glads in rotation. A quest. Sure. All right. Battle phase. A quest in. It is Sangen. Okay. Go so ahead and search. Get the search. Yep. Uh, we're going to need it, that's for sure. So get to tag out with a quest, so I need to consider that. I'm going to grab the Warrior Lady. Okay, no problem. And then uh, 11 direct. I'll take it. Cool. All right, end of battle phase. I'll put back a quest. Who are you grabbing? I'm pulling out Laquari, the biggest of the bunch there. It's a big dude, 21. Mm -hmm. Right there. Put the token on. Yep. Uh, I'll go main two. I'll just pass. Go ahead. Okay. We'll draw. Well... I guess that's something. Now you're on Rush Recklessly, Ring of Destruction. Be mindful of that. Uh, I'm just going to do some cleanup duty. I'll Dark Hole. Yeah, okay. I'll get my Wish Search. Yep, not the best. It's only like a one for one, but whatever. Off the Witch of the Black Forest, I'll actually pick up Bestiary. That's pretty good. I'm just going to set one and pass. Okay, I will draw for turn. Stand by, main. Sure. All right, I will activate Proving Ground. Sure. Cool. Off of the Proving Ground. What do I want? Okay, off of Proving Ground, I'll pick up a... This seems like the best one. Not a lot of good ones. I'll pick up Dimakari. Seems okay. Okay. Um, SDR, Dimakari in hand. Mm -hmm. I will activate Premature Burial. I'm going to target Laquari. Sure. He's back, and then I'll pair him up with... I'll I was pair hoping him up that with was the case. The normal Bestiary here. Sure. Okay, and then I'm going to contact fuse. Do they go to graveyard or they go shuffle? They get shuffled, they get shuffled into the deck. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take these two, contact fuse them away into Gazaris. Sure. And then Gazaris, I'll pop one card. I'll just pop your face down there. It was Faith. I was trying to bait oh, you with okay. the warrior lady. Not bad. You could have got the dark hole back, but that would have been yep. it. Um, I will just go battle phase with Gazaris, attack you directly. Take 24. Nice. And then I will go main phase two. Well, end of the battle phase, I'll shuffle him back. Sure. And then I'll tag back out into Laquari and a quest. Uh, Laquari gets its trigger, and then a quest will pick back up the proving ground from the graveyard. Sure. Alex, things are looking grim for you, dude. Yeah, they're not looking <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just uh, I'll pass turn to you, buddy. To be fair, whether that was Warrior Lady or uh, Faith, uh, it was not long for this earth in either case. Uh, we'll go to main one here. I'm going to think. Uh, there's a lot of things I got to worry about. It's not good. I'm going to brain con the quest. Sure. You can have it. Okay. Battle. Thinking. What are you, why are you doing this? Is attack declaration fine? On declaration, I'll activate Book of Moon and I'll book the quest. Sh sure. That is fine. Okay. It didn't go exactly how I wanted it to go. I know you have Proving Ground in hand. I think that's the only thing I do know. You know I have Dimakari as well. Oh, Dimakari. Yeah, she added that last turn. Uh, you're going to get this booked quest back. Sadly, it's not Snatch Steel. All right. We'll get a second main. Uh, I'm going to smash the Laquari. Sure. My plan was to crash just so you had no monsters left on the field, but sadly, we did not get there. Uh, and then I think I'm just going to normal summon Jane Lightsworn Paladin and go to my end phase. No problem. Yep. You get this, I'll mill two. Go to you. Yep. All right. Draw for turn. Unfortunately, Alex, that is GG, my guy. I'm going to flip Let's up the quest. Yep. I'm snatch steal the Jane. There and it is. Go in for lethal damage. I had Ooh. the dark arm Ooh. next turn off the Jane Mills, but I could yeah, not yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah, seal it up, though. You My got it. No, bro. I just got slapped this game. And you had ring anyway. Yeah, so yeah no I had chance. that back there, yeah. too. I was like, oh, kind of rough there. I, that was yeah. the second time I drew ring that game, so it's like, that's kind of crazy. My I opening... opened up extremely ideal <sighs> yeah. both these games, actually. These two cards you see, Snatch Deal, Ring, I had those both games. I just didn't get to play Snatch Game. Nasty. So. Nasty. Yeah, I had... My opening hand was Dark Hole, Brain Con, Smashing, Avarice, and Magician of Faith. So, Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of rough. Yeah, <laughs> that, that wasn't really going to get us anywhere. I think where I misplayed was, I think off the Sangen, rather than Warrior Lady, I think I should have gotten Card Trooper because I didn't have Dad in hand yet, but I had Avarice. So I should have tried to go Card Trooper to mill just to fuel Avarice to possibly get me into more cards. I think that was where a misstep was. And the Card Trooper could have probably funneled me into another because you probably would have either killed it in battle or you would have uh, popped it with like Geyserus or Mermillo. So it probably would have just cycled into something else 
and gave me one extra thing for Avarice. So I think I could have done that maybe a little bit differently. But aside from that, I mean, just based off of everything you had, this this was not looking good for me the entire time. Yeah, I, had... I felt fully in control the whole game there, I think, actually. Just yeah. like I, I constantly had like outs to your cards and then the gladiator beasts, as long as they're able to tag in at least one of yeah. them. Like you even saw the game one when you put the tomato out. I'm just like, I don't have to do anything. Like, cause you could search into Sangin if I just attack yeah. over the tomato. So just pop it, get it out of the way. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. I had Sangin in hand, so I oh, couldn't so have done that. Even do that. <laughs> but you didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't. No, I did not. Yeah. So uh, that was the plan. But no, uh, of course that wasn't the case. Yeah, I had plenty of stuff out of the board for you. I brought in like plenty of stuff to deal with this matchup, but I just didn't see any of it. And so uh, without like the removal, just in the form of like, I had Smashing Ground and Dark Hole, but I mean, any other spot removal just would have been nice to help clean up the board. But even so, I did deal with your back row and it was just, it was not going to be easy. But GG's my friend, the first game of Duelist, uh, I was going to say Duelist Genesis, but the first match of the Synchro Era goes to you. And now I want to hear all about your lovely pulls out of Duelist Genesis, my friend. What'd you get? Alex, my first, my first pull of Duelist Genesis was not. I had to okay. re-roll the very first pull okay. of Duelist Genesis. I don't okay. feel ashamed to do it though. I was telling everybody about it. I was saying like a mediocre Duelist Genesis pull is not good enough because I agree. Synchro monsters are so I strong. agree. Yep. So my very first bout, I got nothing. I got okay. nothing good. Like nothing. Like Montage Dragon and stuff <laughs> like that. So I immediately re-rolled it okay. and I proceeded to get Gladiator Beast War Chariot Whoa. and nothing. Hey, that's, oh, I just got War okay. Chariot though. I got no Synchro monsters this time around. Not a single white That's card. insane. You didn't get a single. I mean, I guess the Not lowest one. rarity one is super in Android, right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess yeah. you have to get a little bit lucky. And there's only, I think there's six or seven synchros in the whole set. Yeah, yeah, Ish, but I mean, so, yeah. five of them are like really good though. So I yeah, mean, like I'd yeah. like one of them, but I didn't get lucky enough to get any of them. Did wow. you get any synchros besides Android? I was gonna say, you did see the Android, so that's nothing new. Uh, so I also had to re-roll. So I'm interested to hear your take on this. So my first roll, I got a Thought Ruler Archfiend, okay? Pretty good one, pretty good one, right? But similar to you, I felt similarly that I felt that that wasn't good enough. I felt that I could have pulled at least two synchros in 24 packs, realistically, right? So yeah. I actually made the decision fuck it let's just go again so then the second time around my first pack had red dragon arch <laughs> Uh, wow. Which is pretty good, pretty good, right? Uh, and then I got Android maybe like 18 or 19 packs in. So I think I came out ahead of the Thought Ruler. I think Thought Ruler is maybe like slightly better than Archfiend, but Archfiend's still really good in its own right, right? Yeah. Uh, so those are the only two I got. So no Stardust, no Goyo, sadly for me. But you're going to have a chance next episode on the wheel to possibly redeem and get one of those. So I'm not looking forward to that. This was a big yeah. episode for you to win. And, really uh, big wheel. I don't think I got anything else. of. No I pulled four secrets across all the packs. I pulled Four. two secrets. Yeah, I pulled Ice Queen once in each set. And then I pulled Cyber Shark on the new roll. And I pulled uh, Splendid Venus on the old wow, rolls. that's so unlucky. I know it was I got, so unlucky. Yeah, I mean, typical, right? I but, got Hand of the Six Samurai, which I think is like one of the better secrets. Not bad, but, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think that card's actually pretty good. When we, Especially when we get to like, uh, what is it? Storm of Ragnarok way later. Yep. I think Hand's quite good. If you get lucky in the Six Sam department. I don't know what your yep. pulls look like. But Gage, you don't know how my wheel went this episode. Uh, honestly, with Retro Pack, it could be a very, very big one. So I'm curious. What did you get? So I'm actually kind of bummed that you didn't pull Goyo or Stardust because eh. I was looking so forward to banning it next episode with my <gasps> freshly pulled ban ticket. You always get the good ones. You know what I got last episode? Yeah, you got, got like a rare. rare. I got a rare. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Well, uh, I mean, you might have to take a look at this Gladiator Beast. I might have to ban Geyserus, honestly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to stop it while while you're bleeding, you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's rough, but it's okay. Uh, I got plenty of time to think of what to cook up against you next episode, and we'll see. We'll see. I think there's some good considerations for what to ban out of your pool. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So, shout out to Shadow1317, Mono, Tim 0 x 3 Cameron Smith, MBT Play Medulce, Chaotic Meatball Part 2, Pony Starks, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Phoenix the Immortal, Jordan Coons, Iron Blades, and Jesse Wood, Chris Hood. David Liu, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretz, John Two Based, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Zerius Business, MBT Caught Injecting His Fairy Lily, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Valen Jackson, Hornet, Aren't You Glad I Didn't Say Alpha Tribute, Ben 10, TC Gaming, thanks.
Thanks for the sleeves, Dad. Matthew Brady, Max Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Luabon, Yodabon, Helios 515, Simo's Chaos Cooking Draft, MBT funding the Irish with his Rothschild Wealth, that's his Roth IRA, Simping for Simo, Stolfin Amethyst, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, LGMBTQ, Nim Noodle, Malabranch of the Burning Tunnel, Stella and Zoe Vermillion, Wonder Waffle, James Keen, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed are boyfriends. MBT cancel by all community soon, cancel by all committee soon, cancel by all players soon. Not reading cards makes the game interesting, and you know it. The MBT and MBT Yu-Gi-Oh stands for Morbin Time, The Undertaker versus Simo and MBT, Dalton, Hunter Reed, Shrug, Zyx, The Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, Corvain, Dark Echo, TG Starman, Seamus Engage, Viso the V, Wacky Waving, Arm Failing, Fable, Two Men Selling, Crudely Painted, Not So Funny, Plywood Cutout, Folk Art, and HatFormat.com. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.